Now, as you may have heard on Arise News, the final result of the presidential election in Kenya has emerged. That ballot is being seen as a sort of mirror for the Nigerian election in 2023. There are ethnic considerations, a young population yearning for change, similar constitutional provisions for the practice of multi-party democracy, similar core issues defining the ballot, and an incumbent president who is not a candidate. There's also the hope that, as in Kenya, technology will have a positive influence on the outcome of the election in Nigeria, enhancing a free and fair poll in 2023. So what inspiration can Nigerians draw from the conduct of that Kenyan ballot, especially given the demographic, cultural, historical and political differences between the two countries? Or do the similarities outweigh those differences. And I should mention that William Ruto has been announced as the winner of that ballot. Well, for her assessment, I'm joined now in the studio by the director of the prominent West African think tank, the Center for Democracy and Development, Ideat Hassan, who was part of the international team observing the Kenyan elections. And she only just got back at the weekend. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. You. Uh, you were there in Kenya up till, as I said, this weekend as part of the International Election Observer Team there. Make sense of what has happened with this election for us and lead us through some of the complexities of the last few hours. Oh, thank you very much, um, Charles. It's been a very interesting election and in several ways it's actually similar to the Nigerian elections or what we propose to do in the 2023 elections mm. oh, politically i think it's also similar because you look at three very strong but important things defining these elections one is the role of technology incubancy and the judiciary itself in the previous to the elections there was a lot of judicialization of matters of pure politics even up to the use of the Kim's kit, which is the equivalent of this um, beavers, mm -hmm. which we will be using in our elections. And if I use that as just one small example, you find a few days to the elections, there had been a court order saying that the manual sh register should mm. actually be made resort to as against the Kim's kit itself. But eventually, one thing that is also a lesson is that the Court of Appeal decision, several few hours into the elections, mm. reinstated the provision of their electoral acts, allowing for this um, for the use of the Kim's kit, mm. not supplanting the manual register itself. And this Kim's kit actually worked perfectly when you look at it, which is the beavers. It wasn't a problematic one the way we actually thought it was going to be problematic. It took between the two minutes and seven minutes for a voter mm -hmm. to conclude voting itself. Um, people were authenticated using their thumbprint, not their faces, and this authentication worked. In only few places where it did not work, you find that they were older people and living in rural area who possibly would have um, had issues with mm. their um, fingers itself so that was a seamless exercise but what also made it seamless had to do with the calmness the discipline and the trust in the government the electoral system irrespective of the fact that they had a dip in their turnout to 65 percent in these elections but everybody was disciplined calm and they worked through the process seamlessly in that uh, regard itself mm -hmm. Incumbency was also a very important factor when you look at the fact that the incumbent uh, president did not support his deputy president, William Ruto, but actually went and supported um, his Odinga. former foe, Raila mm. Odinga, and together they put together what they call the um, uh, Azimio coalition and the Kenya Kwanza, which was for the um, William Ruto itself but this incumbency when we are looking at the outcome of these elections today we have been we have been able to see that it did not also show the will of the people really mm. matter and framing actually mattered because when you see the way they actually projected william ruto it was a rejection of dynastic politics absolutely it was that thing that gives hope to everybody you see you could see hope in the eyes of the people 
what they wanted to see was how a chicken seller could rise up and get to that point. And also this whole campaign slogan, slogan not just the Osla Nation, but the Osla Fund, mm. where I had projected to give out some monies uh, to people. And people feel like, okay, and people were voting. Then loyalty, I think, also matters. Political alliances, which we saw in within the APC and during the APC primaries itself, mm. where we had some Northerners say that, look, if we renege, on our support to a particular candidate, I think that politically the North will not be trusted again. We also saw that where ethnic politics, the alliance between the Kikuyus and the Kalenjins mm. could not be supplanted with what Uhuru had done with the Luos. You even find the vice presidential candidate, the female, Mata, uh, she got like 300 and something in her polling unit, where William Ruto got more than 900. Mm votes in the polling unit itself so all this comes together and technology i think it's actually a positive i think the introduction of this high rev that we have has been able to change the whole context of what elections really will look like because you are having a transmission of this result Instant. instantly yeah. and uh, the only thing that i think will be a lesson for us is that infrastructures are very very important yeah are they better in kenya than they are here? better in kenya yeah. in terms of road in terms of the 4g i observed the election out of the capital city and i'll tell you that that is like a suburb of the suburb of the suburb we rural they had a 4g internet mm. but we should not again be afraid that oh because of internet connection we cannot use our beavers because you have to understand that is an offline everything has been pre-programmed once mm. you get to where there is internet yes, access, I see what you, mean. Yeah. you can get it on and mm. people can look at it the citizens can watch yes the and that's an important thing because the I, I, IEBC in Kenya put all the results from all the polling stations on a public portal that mm. any Kenyan could see and check the results I mean that speaks to transparency and outweighs any argument of election fraud doesn't it exactly and it's the same we've been doing with the result viewing platform high rev since the edo elections mm. where it was trialed i think during the nasarawa um elections but that was a very small one but since the edo elections we started using the high rev where we can monitor the upload itself then we can also look and analyze the report result mm. uh as well uh, and immediately and again, I think what is important is the polling unit result becomes like the final result. Mm. So all those things that Absolutely. happen during the collation that you can go with gone, you can disrupt the system, it's again reduced to the barest Absolutely. minimum. But let me ask you this then, because you were an observer there. Do, do you see any justification in the protests that are coming out now against the results that, you know, the, the Rilo Dinga camp almost certainly going to um gonna go to court about this because just before i mean you were talking about the the um the iebc the electoral commission being you know doing a very good job just before william ruto was announced the electoral commission part of it met to say that they are not in agreement with the results I understand that there were four out of the seven commissioners who said they were not part of the result and they complained about the opaqueness of the counting process. As an observer yourself, what do you make of that? I think that one, Kenyan elections has always been like that. With each election, it comes with new sets of dynamics mm. and contestation. And their election is very highly judicialized. Now, there is a difference in the Kenyan system. In the Nigerian judicial system, we talk about substantial irregularity. For their own system, they do not talk about substantial irregularity. And when you go and look at the decision of the court mm. in uh, Minor Kai and two others versus IEBC in 2017, the election again, if you remember in 2017, I remember writing about this. This election was, was cancelled based on just like Form 34B not even 34a saying that those those votes could not be properly accounted for and missed others uh in this system so they are not looking for substantial irregularity mm. and if we run they have to do a, another elections 
where, of course, the other candidate, uh, Lila, decided to pull out. So it will not also be out of place when they go and their electoral jurisprudence then quashes this report. But the re result of the pulling unit remains very Absolutely. paramount. And I think there is one lesson we should actually learn again, which we must point, the, imp the polling. How we really need to be very wary of polling, especially in a very volatile country like Nigeria. Ahead of the elections, there were a lot of polls coming up. In fact, if you see the newspaper a week to the elections, all the polls were actually giving Raila leads mm. and creating this belief in people that really it was going to win the elections. Not many people are aware of the fact that polling can actually be political. I could bring by, I put my research question out, I bring people who are very, very close to me and they know how to do this, or I hire my consultants and I start giving favorable figures, mm. reeling it out. But be that as it may, it's a close election and the, I feel that I, I cannot judge what the elections really are, but I think being very close, uh, somehow the right must a, thing must actually have been done and the rest is left for the court mm. to actually determine. So do you see the Kenyan election as a mirror of the Nigerian ballot in 2023 or are there too many variables that make a mirror comparison difficult? I think that the mirror comparison in terms of the politics I think are quite different. Because what happened in Kenya, which our political parties have refused to learn from, mm. is that they created this big coalition, they call it coalition, but it could serve as an alliance if you want to look at it, because the parties are not subsumed mm. into one. So you had the Kenyan Kwanzaa, who still had all the supporters, Ford, uh, uh, Ford all these parties, they still contested at the level of the county. Some got governors. They got MPs, mm. but they were together for the presidential elections. The same way the Jubilee, of course, went with uh, ODM, the Rylas, uh, the Uru's party, Rylas party, like, and another eight others. So between seven, 14 parties, they <coughs> all Excuse formed me. different, they formed a coalition to prosecute this presidential election. So they brought together their forces. And they were able to win. So I have a county to deliver. And they had an agreement already how they were going to share position. I think this is very, very positive. Right. Like, uh, very positive. So three states, I think that is a lot. I think that's what we have. We have they have to learn as in the political parties. Right. The second learning really for us is that tech, trust is very important. We really have to trust the mm. system. We have to trust our electoral commission. We have to trust that uh, things could actually work and it will help. Because when you see the orderliness of the citizens, as early as 5.15 that the poll was actually opening, everything was there. It was not like it was perfect the night before to be candid. Some still had delayed materials distribution. Mm. But by 5.15, the polls was there. Everything was there. The people were well lined up. The officials, they were the same six like we will put and say this one is a Q right. something. But they walked the right way. They were very civil. They were very calm. A nation at times do not get beyond what we cannot do beyond our people. So it was not just about sabotage. Here right. we were not dealing with the sabotage of uh, politicians trying to sabotage the system. We also had the citizens working very well. Then the training of the election officials, I think, was well done. So those are lessons so that are lessons Nigeria needs to they learn. They need to learn. Then, of course, they had this 4G internet, right. which really worked uh, very well. The infrastructures were quite good. Right. Okay. I, I want to thank you very much indeed. Idiot Hassan is the director of the West African think tank, the Center for Democracy and Development, and she was part of the international team observing the Kenyan elections. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.